Welcome to the Bison Armory Case Volumizer instruction video. In this video I will show you how to use the device and the software that comes with it to measure rifle cartridge case volume. First, <coughs> download and install the fidget driver. The fidget driver can be found at the fidgets website fidgets.com if you go to downloads to the windows libraries download the 64-bit installer you'll end up with an application that looks like this install that application when it is finished install the bison case volume setup application that will install the executable in your C drive, in program files, in Bison case volume, right here. I suggest pinning it to your taskbar. Now we're ready to start the application. Once the application is running, you can see there's a start button, a calibrate button, and an undo last button. There are various user parameters that can be entered, including the caliber, brand, condition, trim length, primer, and notes. The notes can be as long as you like. I suggest keeping all of these other entries small. Over here we can see the absolute pressure that is being sensed by the absolute pressure sensor. That's simply getting the ambient air pressure and then the differential pressure of the two sensors. <clears throat> Before we start, the system needs to be calibrated. When everything looks okay, simply click calibrate. That brings up the calibration window. Enter in the values of the case volumes of your known cases, a small case, a small case and a larger case. They have to be dissimilar. In this case, I'm using 223 Remington and 260 Remington. 260 Remington is about the smallest case that the system can measure reliably. Anything up to 300 WSM or even bigger can be measured on the large end. 30 caliber is about the max right now for this device. Start with the small case first. Enter in the volume in grains of water. Enter in the large one as well. Make sure you don't handle the case too much. This is very important. If you handle these cases, it causes the temperature of the brass to increase, which will change the resulting measurement. Okay, now we are ready to measure this case for the calibration. So look here and you can see the differential voltage reading for the two sensors. As you run the case up in the press, hold at the top, and then when you see the pressure reading move to the lower value, release, insert the larger of the two weighed cases, again handling as little as possible, and run that case up. You will see the values over here change. When they change, you know that you have successfully calibrated your system. And hit done. Now let's test the resulting calibration. Hit the start button. It will select default caliber, default brand. And we can run the case up in the press. Hold until the measurement is created. That looks good. Let's do a couple more measurements. It takes a while to equilibrate. I usually do 10 measurements before I start to measure for record. If things are looking good, then you can stop that. Okay, now let me show you what happens if you heat the case up. Take the case and hold it in your hand to apply thermal energy. Add it back to the system and run it up and you'll see that the volume is quite a bit lower this time. There. 
So that's because the equations used to make this work assume an isothermal system. So if you heat this up, then you jump across isotherms and you get a different answer. The, uh, the brass in the case has a lot of thermal mass relative to the air and it will affect the measurement because it'll affect the, the pressure for a given change in volume significantly as you can see here. Now that you've calibrated your system, you're ready to start measuring cases. I've got a block here of 50 260 Remington cases. They are all trimmed to length and otherwise <clears throat> prepped and ready to load. You can also measure fired cases that are in decent condition. If you've been shooting with a silencer, you might want to clean them first. If they're very dented up, that will affect the case volume measurement. So if you've been shooting with an auto loader, that may be challenging to get a good measurement from fired cases that have not been prepped. Trim to length is very important for this to work properly so that you have uniform case length to get a good idea of the actual internal usable volume of the case. Let's start our application. Once the application is running, we can enter in any user parameters we care to use. Such as the caliber, in this case 260 RAM. The system will remember the caliber and brand. These are Lapua cases. The condition is multi-fired. And I'm gonna leave the other fields blank. When we're ready, hit start. When the volume reading measure uh, reads go, you're going to use careful technique to run the case up in the RAM. So move it up until you feel it touch the face of the case volumizer and then smoothly ramp it up to top. And then when the measurement has been taken, you can lower the RAM. You don't want to hold too hard a pressure against the system when it's at the top. Just gentle, even pressure so that you don't damage the gasket. Let's go ahead and measure this one several times to see how well we're doing. Not too bad. I'll do one more. You want to hold until the measurement is taken. So this looks pretty good. We're less than plus minus a tenth of a grain. So now that I'm ready to actually measure this block of cases, I'm going to hit start. Okay, an important thing. I mentioned this in the calibration. Don't hold the cases any longer than you have to. You could even wear a glove or anything that will inhibit the transfer of heat from your hand to the case because that will change the measurement. So I'm going to hold just a little bit and insert the case, run it up in the RAM. It's good to have consistent technique. Try to use the same speed for each stroke. Try to handle the cases as little as possible. Once you touch, run to the top, hold. We'll do 10 cases. And then we'll repeat. If you feel like you didn't get a good stroke, if you feel like there's any kind of problem, if the reading doesn't make sense, you can hit the undo last button and you can try again. Always wait for the system to read go before you start. There we go. Get through these 10 cases.
And here you can see the relative distribution of case volumes. With a proper calibration, the actual measured volume is close to the truth. With a poor calibration, you still get good relative data and it will allow you to select cases for a match or to bin your cases so that you have consistent volume throughout a certain quantity. When I'm shooting rifle matches, I usually shoot 20 round matches plus two or more ciders. So I will try to divide these myself. My own way of dealing with the data is to divide these at the median if I do 50 cases so that I have 25 above and 25 below the median, median which will give me a consistent performance across the match. And here's the last case. All right, now let's run through those again and see if we can get consistent volume measurements. Back to the first case. 54.92 was our first measurement. 54.88, very close. 0.04. Generally, the system will measure to within plus or minus about 0.3% of full scale, which for a 223 Remington is around a tenth of a grain plus or minus. For these 260 Remingtons, that ends up being around one and a quarter or so. With minimal case handling and consistent technique, you should get very repeatable values. Notice also the second round of measuring these cases are all near or lower to the originals. That's expected because as the cases heat up from being used and from being handled, we actually expect the measurement to go down. That's how the temperature affects jumping across isotherms. Now here you can see that these ones were measured later and so you can actually get more consistent as the system warms up. A lot of times I will take a small fan if I want to repeat measurements of the same cases, like this little tabletop fan, and run the air across the cases so that they equilibrate with the surrounding air more quickly. All right, two more to go. You can even run the fan right here. It won't affect the measurement because once the face is sealed, it, uh, it, it won't change the pressure readings. A powerful fan might, but a small fan like this won't. Just something to get some air going across the cases will always do. Looking pretty good. And last one. And there we are. Pretty consistent. Here we are looking at 0 0.04, 0 0.15, 0 0.01, 0 0.0, uh, 0 0.11, sorry. 0 0.15, 0 0.07, 0 0.07, and so forth. So pretty good. And like I said, you can figure out which ways you want to uh, use this data to spread to separate your cases into different groups, or to look for outliers that you can toss or use for blow off, or to use for um, practice and plinking, and to keep the ones that are more consistent for matches and whatnot. Uh, like I said, I like to split them at the median. So you see you have all your statistical data here for that measurement. And um, I'll usually take the highs and lows and set those aside for warming up or for ciders. Well, ciders, you want to use the same ammo as you do for the match, of course. 
So here you can see these are not too bad though. I don't have any real outliers. So if I split these at the median, I'm, I'm going to do pretty well. If you have a really important match, you might only take the cases that were in a narrow range about the median or the mean. So let's have a look at this data. The data ends up in a case file. Here we go. So the data is placed in the C drive in a file, folder called case volume data. And it will be placed in a folder that had the name of the uh, brand, uh, sorry, caliber that you did. So we put ours in 260 Remington in Lapua and today. And that was the most recent one. You can open that right in Microsoft Excel or any other spreadsheet or even any text editor. And here we are. So we have all the data and you can combine files. So if you measure 50, then you can add 50 more and just tack them onto the end with a simple copy paste. Let's have a look at the data in a chart. And there we go. Actually, that's not the right kind of chart, is it? Line doesn't make sense. Let's do that again. Just a simple scatter plot. So here are the case volumes. And what you do with the data is up to you. I hope this video has been informative. If you have any questions, send an email to gunsmith at Bison Armory with a subject heading of Bison Case Volumizer, and we'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.